You are listening to Vaccine Voices, an educational series presented by the iPro QINQIO. Welcome to the third installment in our series on Applying Motivational Interviewing, or MI, in long-term care settings. My name is Jeff Weatherhold, and I'm the host for this series. I am a motivational interviewing trainer and coach and the principal at MI for Health. Motivational interviewing is an evidence-driven approach to support individuals in moving toward positive behavior changes. MI practitioners seek to identify and strengthen an individual's own reasons for change, their intrinsic motivation, while addressing the obstacles and challenges that make it hard for them to change. We hope this series will help you incorporate MI into your own practice. In this series, we're going to cover a range of cases that represent realistic depictions of different forms of vaccine resistance in long-term care settings. For each of these, the interviewer will be a director of nursing within a long-term care organization. The interviewees will be different each time and will reflect the diversity of backgrounds, roles, and perspectives that we encounter in long-term care settings. You can find more information on motivational interviewing and this series by clicking on the wave button at qi.ipro.org or by visiting miforhealth.com. The long-term care facility where you work strongly encourages all staff members to be vaccinated for COVID-19 annually. You are speaking with Alejandra, a member of the custodial staff who is relatively new to your facility about COVID-19 vaccination. Alejandra has either not responded to or deferred conversation on communications about vaccination since starting her job. You've requested some time to meet with Alejandra before her shift today. You haven't had an opportunity to speak with Alejandra in any depth previously. Given that, you're self-conscious that your first chance to speak with her will be on a potentially challenging topic. Good morning, Alejandra. Thank you for coming in a little early to speak with me today. Please come on in and have a seat. How are you today? I'm okay. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. I know we've met each other in the halls, but we haven't really had a chance to talk since you started. How has your experience been here so far? It's good. I have a friend that used to work here, and I know that she liked it. She told me this was a good place to work, and Michelle has been a great supervisor. She is so kind and understanding. This is much closer to my house than my last job, and that helps a lot, too. You feel it's been a good work environment for you, and it saves you a lot of time commuting. Yeah, I'm really grateful. Everybody here has been very nice. I'm glad to hear that. I wanted to talk with you today about COVID-19 vaccinations. Are you okay speaking with me about that? Oh, uh, sure. Yes, I got vaccinated. You got a vaccine this fall? No, no, not this fall. Back when it all started, three years ago, I guess. My youngest was in kindergarten. I remember how hard it was when he couldn't go to school. It was a tough time to be a parent with young kids. Yeah, it sure was. You received the two-shot series for initial vaccine against COVID-19. That's right. They were giving them out where I worked at the time. Everyone had to get them. You felt like there was an expectation that you would receive COVID-19 vaccine. I guess so. To be honest with you, I didn't really think it was an option. Uh, Everyone was so panicked. Everyone was really scared. That's understandable. It was a challenging time for everyone. Have you received any COVID vaccines since then? No, I haven't. I know that I should. You are aware that annual vaccines are a big part of maintaining resistance to COVID-19. Yeah, I know that people disagree on this a lot, whether or not to get vaccines. There are so many sources of information out there, and I try to be careful not to believe everything I read or take it as, as face value. I think why some people would send me this and where they got it from. I know there are trusted sources for, for information, but it also feels like the guidance on this has changed over and over again. Wow. There is a lot of information out there, and you are right that the guidance has changed. You are very thoughtful about what you accept and where it comes from. Affirmations are a powerful tool for an MI practitioner when used judiciously. There is a danger in overusing affirmations, as this tends to be perceived as disingenuous or superficial. As a rule, affirmations are most effective when they are specific. Some MI practitioners go so far as to distinguish simple and complex affirmations in much the same way that we distinguish simple and complex reflections. 
just as complex reflections build on what has been said by calling out meaning, feeling, or intention that has not been voiced, complex affirmations call out specific strengths that the interviewee may not perceive in themselves. Alejandra shared how considerate she is of the information she encounters on vaccines. A simple affirmation like, you've read a lot, could have been used, but this doesn't add much. The interviewer here offers a more complex affirmation. You are very thoughtful about what you accept and where it comes from. Alejandra might not appreciate how special her willingness to critically evaluate information is, but the interviewer certainly does, and that might help Alejandra to appreciate it more. Complex affirmations also help to highlight and encourage change talk. In this case, Alejandra volunteers that she has willingly engaged with and critically considered a lot of information. It is doubtful that she would have done this if her mind were made up about annual vaccination. She is working through a decision about whether she is willing to change. I try to be. I see a lot of people every day in my work and I have a family at home to think about. I know I need to do the best I can to keep us all healthy. Your family's health is very important to you and you recognize that your work comes with a high potential for exposure to covid Yeah, I do. There are the residents and their families and the staff here to think about. And then there are all the people that I work with in the evenings. Now, that job is less of a risk, but it's still exposure. I know. Many members of our team have other jobs in addition to their work here. I know that can be a challenge to balance. It's manageable. I won't complain. That's not me. My shifts are at night, so they don't conflict with my work here. And you said it is less of a risk of exposure. Yes, it's a warehouse, so there's lots of people there, but there is also a lot of space and ventilation. I know those things help. They certainly do help to reduce the risk of transmitting COVID. You put a lot of thought into your health and safety when it comes to COVID. How do vaccines fit into that? I mean, I know they're supposed to make you less likely to get it and less sick when you do. I have had COVID twice, so I don't know if mine did any good. It probably helped. You think it was a good decision to be vaccinated? I mean, I guess so. It wasn't so bad for me, the side effects. People get really sick from these vaccines, though, so I have to think about that. Uh, My brother was home for two days afterwards, and my friend had a fever that was pretty bad. You were worried about the short-term side effects of another vaccination, and you were able to manage these pretty easily when you received multiple doses before. I was, but lots of people are having a harder time with it now. I don't know if that's something I can handle. You're much more worried about how you feel after receiving the vaccine than you used to be. No, I'm sure I can handle it. You don't understand. I just can't deal with this now. This is not the reaction that the interviewer was anticipating. It may have felt like personal concerns about short-term side effects were the primary obstacle to Alejandra accepting vaccination but she is telling us clearly that is not the case. Remember that there is a risk inherent in any complex reflection that you may be wrong about what the interviewee has communicated. That has happened here between the interviewer and Alejandra. Being wrong in a reflection is a challenging moment for many MI learners. It is easy to feel like we have derailed the conversation with an unwarranted assumption about the interviewee. It can be uncomfortable to be wrong. It can also be a valuable learning opportunity and a way to move the conversation forward. MI encourages us to listen actively, and this means making assumptions. Our brains naturally fill in the gaps we perceive in others' stories. The less an interviewee shares, the more likely this kind of misunderstanding is to arise. The interviewer has misunderstood Alejandra. MI teaches us that we are better off recognizing assumptions sooner than later and openly correcting them. By doing so, we minimize the damage caused by a misunderstanding. We also model a willingness to be wrong for the interviewee, an important quality if we expect them to reconsider decisions they've made. The interviewer is going to acknowledge their misunderstanding with Alejandra in order to try to keep this conversation moving forward. Let's see how this plays out. I'm sorry, Alejandra. I heard you were more worried about the physical side effects of the vaccine now. But that's not what you were trying to tell me. No, it's not about that. I get their side effects with every vaccine. I understand that they don't happen to everyone, but they are common enough. I have seen plenty of people need time off. I cannot deal with that now. I have to work. Availability for work is a high priority for you. I understand. It's a high priority for my whole family. I have two young kids at home. I have my husband at home. They need me now. Okay. This would be a particularly hard time for you to feel sick. I don't need to get sick right now. I just can't let that happen. 
I need to work. If I'm not working, then nobody is working. And that's not okay for us. You have a lot of financial responsibility in your family. That puts pressure on you. This is just not the time. My husband is at home. He is hurt and can't work right now. It wasn't supposed to be a big deal, but it's been two months. It's stressful for all of us. He's miserable not working. He will be back to work soon, though. You're carrying a lot of weight in your home right now. I hear that. It would be a hard time to show up at home feeling sick. Yeah, that would be tough. I would need to ask my brother and his wife to help us. You have some options to help you in the short term. Is that something you could talk to your husband about? Sure. They are usually able to help us out when we need it. We can talk about it, but I still need to work. That's not optional right now. I understand a lot more about why. Thank you for sharing all of this with me. We have had some staff members require some time off after receiving their annual vaccines. Most people don't need it, but if you need a day off, we understand and we'll find coverage. I appreciate that. I don't know if that's a chance I can take with my other job, though. I see people show up to work there even when they are pretty sick. Missing too much work is not a good idea if you want to keep your job there. I had to miss a day already last month to help my husband. I hear you. Time off is a big obstacle in your other job. I don't think that is a risk I can take right now. You have a lot of to balance and you're doing the best you can for yourself and your family right now. I do. I know you want me to get vaccinated right now like everyone else who works here. I get it. I like working here, but I really don't want to have to choose between jobs right now. That's that's too much. What is important is for you to make the best decision for you and your family. Your job here is safe no matter what you choose to do. This is your decision. I'm here to help you as best as I can. This is a challenging moment in the conversation. Alejandra is sharing that she feels like she may have to choose one job over another, and that this entails more insecurity than she can bear right now. On the one hand, it is reassuring that Alejandra is comfortable enough to share this worry with the interviewer. On the other, it is imperative that the interviewer addresses it. Alejandra feels threatened, which is an example of sustained talk. She is less likely to be able to make any decision toward change for herself until she feels safer. Remember that in any MI informed conversation, the interviewee will need to make the decision to change. The goal of MI is to identify and strengthen an individual's own motivation to change. That means supporting the individual's autonomy, their freedom to decide, even when it might not be the decision you would prefer for them to make. Supporting autonomy can be an effective way to manage sustained talk in cases where a participant becomes more anxious or uncertain about a decision. We are playing the long game when we practice MI because we know that this approach is more likely to get more people to make sustainable changes in their behaviors. Any outcome that moves us closer to change is a success, even if that is as simple as the interviewee being willing to have another conversation with you when they otherwise might not have considered it. In this instance, the interviewer has reinforced Alejandra's right to self-determination while directly addressing the perceived consequences that are within the interviewer's control. Let's see how Alejandra responds. Okay, thank you for saying that. I thought I was going to walk in here and be told that I needed to get vaccinated right now. I didn't know how I was going to make that work. Maybe right now is not the time. Perhaps we could make a plan for what comes next. It's okay if that changes. I know things can change. We can talk about it if they do. Okay. What do you have in mind? Well, you've received the vaccine before, and you have clearly done a lot of reading with a critical eye for where your information comes from. Are there any questions you still have about side effects that I can address? I don't think so. I know it's not everyone and that they aren't so bad for most people. I just can't make that work right now. Understood. You shared earlier that you were comfortable talking to your husband about receiving an annual vaccination. Yeah, I can do that. It will be easier once he has a plan for going back to work. That makes sense. And you can reach out to your brother and sister-in-law if necessary. Yes, I can do that too. You were concerned about having to take time off from your other job. It would be great if I could not have to have this conversation with them. I just need to show up for work and not be a problem. People who miss too much work stand out. And I need to not push it too far in case anything else goes wrong with my husband's situation and I need to help him. You need to save that flexibility you have there for your family right now. That's right. I can talk to my husband and my family once he's doing better. I can do that. They will understand. I don't know about my boss, though. Uh, He isn't as understanding as you and Michelle. 
Are there days when you don't have to work there? I work every weeknight. That's why I have my shifts laid out the way I do here. You're not there on Saturday or Sunday night. Correct. Well, we can arrange for you to receive a vaccine while you're here on a Saturday, if that helps. Then you wouldn't have to worry about if you didn't feel up for work on Sunday. That would be easier for me. It might be easier to get my brother to help on the weekends too. Okay. Perhaps you and I can talk again when you know more about your husband's return to work. He should be going back soon. Yeah, but I, I don't know. That's okay. You can let me know when you know more. And I'll make a note to check back in with you in a month if I don't hear from you. No pressure, just to make sure we connect. Okay, I will let you know. And I'm sorry I had to unload all of this on you. I really appreciate you listening. You're welcome, Alejandra. I know that you have a lot on your plate and that you're doing the best you can to manage it all. I'm glad we have a plan for what comes next. We will talk again soon. This conversation was a success, even if it wasn't the success that the interviewer might have hoped for at the outset. Alejandra has much more going on in her life than the interviewer knew about. Understanding that makes it possible to help Alejandra move toward a decision that would have a positive impact on the health of her family, her team, and the residents. We highlighted how to use two additional MI tools in this conversation, specific and genuine affirmations to build on change talk and increase the interviewee's sense of capability, and expressing support for an interviewee's autonomy to help navigate sustained talk in making a difficult decision. This was also a chance to begin to explore how to manage missteps in an MI-informed conversation. There was a particularly challenging moment when the interviewer's reflection didn't line up with what mattered to Alejandra. Rather than letting that derail the conversation, the interviewer was able to get much-needed clarity on the issues preventing Alejandra from being comfortable with vaccination and to build trust in the process. We will all make mistakes in conversations like this. When properly managed, those mistakes can turn into resources to help us move the conversation forward with honesty and openness. We are going to continue to offer progressively more challenging conversations in this series. Our next one will be with a family member of a resident. It will touch on some deep feelings of mistrust that stem from the historical mistreatment of marginalized communities by the healthcare system. There are no quick and easy answers to a problem with roots this deep, but there are ways to help this be a productive and supportive conversation about change. We will use this conversation to introduce a couple of additional MI tools and to speak directly to the topic of how to manage negative emotions like anger or frustration from the interviewee in an MI consistent manner. Thank you for joining us for this episode. You can find more information on motivational interviewing and this series by clicking on the wave button at qi.ipro.org or by visiting miforhealth.com. 